It's time for GGSP. I'm Rad. I'm Jem. And I'm Will. W what happened to the studio? Oh, that's weird. Uh, don't worry, you two. I've been spending a lot of time with the creation tools in Dreams, and I have just the solution. Uh, let me just put this down here. Just a little something I made myself. <laughs> there. Huh. Wow, OK. Awesome. Well, coming up on the show, we review the full release of Dreams and give you our final verdict. Plus, come crack some puzzles with me in The Pedestrian. Wow. Have you made anything else, Will? Oh, well, there's, uh, there's this. Ugh. Change it back. Picture a sandbox full of everything you could ever dream of playing with. But to get to that sandbox, you'll need to climb through hundreds of tutorial-shaped jungle gyms or just ask a friend if you can play in their sandbox. That is dreams. And that is a bit of a strange metaphor, Will. Last year, we tested the game's creator early access phase. But now that it's officially finished, it's time to give you a proper review. So let's dive headfirst back into dreams. Oh, the magic sandbox. <laughs> Developers Media Molecule, the creators of Little Big Planet and Tearaway, Dreams is a digital art gallery where dreamers can experience player made creations from across the worldwide Dreamiverse. <laughs> Players can also craft their very own dreams in dream shaping. Our river looks nice and shiny now. Starting entirely from scratch, you can build up levels through sculptures and coding, craft wondrous art pieces, or just lay some funky fresh beats. <laughs> There's no end to what dreamers can create. Oh, it's such a wonderful and game-changing experience. Oh, that it is. Oh, and thanks for the swift data dump, Daz. No. Now, the biggest change to this official release is the inclusion of a story mode of sorts. Art's dream brings us the story of Art, a difficult bass player desperately trying to find his place in the world and his band. Oh, sweet. Over the course of the two-hour story, you'll find yourself playing a platformer, brawler, point-and-click adventure and more as the game rapidly shifts genre and tone. Lost property. This is a proper game. No expenses are spared here. Oh, and the wildest thing is, it's all made in Dreams using the tools available to us. Yeah, it's crazy to see what you could possibly do with this game. Not that Art's Dream really gives you much of a hint as to how it all works. This experience is mainly made to inspire you, with some truly wonderful storytelling and game design on show. Plus, there's a bunch of prize bubbles scattered throughout, each containing creations used in Art's Dream that dreamers can drop into their own projects. There's also a surprising amount of song and dance numbers here. Did someone say song? <coughs> oh. Your mama ain't hip, son, ain't you her? Your pants are wrong and your legs are thin. You're not on the list, so you can't come in. I do think they missed a trick not making this an interactive tutorial, though. Maybe letting us build or teaching us how to program. But I guess they've mainly made this to show us what Dreams is capable of, less so how to do it. It definitely set my expectations of what I could create real high, though. Staring at the blank canvas is still incredibly daunting. What could be here? Where could I take this? What is my dream? But even with those difficulties, once I got into it, dream shaping felt slightly easier than it was in Early Access. Absolutely, and I'm pretty sure the few new tutorials helped with that. And I can't stress how important the tutorials are if you want to get anywhere here. Hover your imp over the bridge. It all may seem incredibly intimidating at first, but sift through the many tutorials and you'll slowly get a handle on things. You can try out some other connector types. It takes a good amount of patience to get to, but I did eventually manage to create something rather familiar. Whoa! I dabbled a bit in character creation and ended up making a mini Will and Gem. Well, I say made. 
Dream Shaping allows you to search the Dreamiverse for other players' creations and pull them into your own scene. Here, you can remix them and make them your own. It's a great feature for novice dreamers like us that want to experiment but don't have the confidence to start quite from scratch. Uh, there seems to be no sign of a certain data analyzing robot within your dreams. Uh, well, Darren, I, I'm still trying to work out the kinks of the whole system. Yeah, and we really needed to nail your magnificent form first try. Exactly. Plus, I was already struggling to keep within the limitations of the game's levels. Sometimes I just couldn't add anything to a scene. Ah, you see, Will, there is a limit to the amount of information each dream can store. This is to ensure that all dreams will run smoothly for any other player who may wish to load it onto their console. So it's best to make use of the Sculpture Detail tool, which helps by subtly lowering the detail on creations without losing too much definition. It does take some getting used to, but it's for the good of the dream of us. Mm, it is a bit of a shame that the limitless possibilities kind of have a limit, but it is nice that it keeps it optimised for everyone. Oh, and speaking of everyone, there's an entire Dreamiverse of player-created content to surf through. What was everyone's favourites? Oh man, I stumbled across this incredibly intriguing sci-fi story. It's certainly more of a proof of concept, but Untitled Space Opera has all the potential of being a super cool spacey game, complete with a floaty sparkly AI. Impressive. Hmm, I just couldn't get past all the remakes of other games. From Sonic to Crash, the fact that with the tools available, dreamers are able to recreate such quality video games... Oh, Mind-blowing. I enjoyed the countless food-based dreams. Big glorious breakfast. Buffet of burgers. A delectable display of donuts. Oh, food glorious food. Oh, Darren, now we're all hungry and lunch is so far away. <laughs> anyway, Will, once you finally awoke from your many dreams, what did you think of the final product? Well, I've followed the development of dreams very closely over the past seven years, so I was eagerly anticipating its arrival, and I've got to say, I'm very happy. The fact that there's now an easy-to-access digital gallery of community content is absolutely wonderful. There is a steep learning curve to dream shaping, but with a little time and patience, there's almost no end to what you can create. So I'm giving this a solid four and a half out of five rubber chickens. I love dream surfing. I'm a sucker for unique and interesting games, and there is no shortage of those here. I think the only thing holding this back is just how tricky it is to craft my own creations. It's not quite as intuitive as it needs to be. But there is so much potential here, and for now, I'm more than happy to play amongst the other dreamers. So I'm giving dreams four out of five rubber chickens. Now, Darren, I've been wondering, how do you play dreams? Is it standard controller or move controls? Oh, well, neither. Uh, Medium Molecule were kind enough to add Darren support. Uh, watch. <laughs> and done. It's called dreams. Not nightmares, Darren. Together in electric dreams. I love puzzles. I'm an absolute fiend for them. But they can be really hard games to balance in terms of difficulty. So when I caught wind of a new puzzle platformer that everyone was raving about, I took it as a good sign. <laughs> Pedestrian is an indie-developed game made by three friends who call themselves Skookum Arts. You play as the pedestrian, a figure simply trying to make its way from one street sign to another. Ah, easy! Well, actually, it's a little more complicated than that. To move between panels, you zoom out and connect doors or ladders to pop out at your desired spot. When you're ready, you zoom back in and control the pedestrian through your freshly created maze. It's kind of like Portal 2, but with string. New ideas are introduced at a breakneck speed, but with such clarity that they soon become second nature. There's all manner of things to dodge or connect, and it keeps things feeling fresh. I was so happy to have all of the tools early on so I could dive into some great puzzles. Almost everything has a really clear function, which lets you draw a fluid line of logic. 
I need to get the key first to unlock the door, to grab the battery, connect it, and then open the exit. That kind of thing. I did struggle to fully understand how a few things worked, but I understood it enough to get by. And at its best, the way the puzzles work is beautiful. In fact, it's my favourite kind of puzzling. You can see exactly what needs to be done next. You just need to figure out how to do it. My three biggest puzzle pet peeves are, one, the next step is hidden, so you have to use a lot of trial and error. Two, lots of backtracking. And three, you can lock yourself out of the puzzle and have to start all over again. And for the most part, the pedestrian avoids these problems. However, in a bid to make things more complex and interesting, sometimes the beautiful clarity of a clear flow of logic is lost. I found myself wishing for a checkpoint system. And I will admit, I did do some angry fist banging of the table. <sighs> There's also occasional red herrings in the form of devices that you don't need to use to solve the puzzle. Why put this valve here if I never need to use it? Actually, add that to the list as my fourth pet peeve. Mercifully, some easier puzzles are peppered throughout, giving you some relief between more frustrating ones and keeping you motivated. It's a smart move by the developers, and in general, I'd say they've gone above and beyond with their design choices. From the minute you boot up the game, it's full of style. Even though the puzzles are mostly contained to flat panels, they're presented in beautiful 3D environments. The puzzles would have been good by themselves, but building a whole world gave it an extra bit of love and attention. Sometimes these environments become a part of the puzzle too, which feels exciting. It encourages you to keep an open mind and not become too laser focused on one thing. Although having a whole wide world to look at meant I sometimes didn't know where I was supposed to go next. The confusion never lasted too long, but I can see some people getting stuck. This aside, the thoughtful design helps the game remain delightful. Little musical motifs slide in and out without overdoing it, just adding a little extra to your journey through the streets and tunnels. So I guess the question is, did the pedestrian delight this puzzle devotee? Well, I'm happy to say it did. I was almost always the right kind of frustrated. And at its best, these puzzles were everything I love most about the genre. It's not a long game, but for me, it's one to be savoured. I'm giving the pedestrian four and a half out of five rubber chickens. All right, Rad, we've got questions and we've got brains that we can use to answer those questions. Sounds like the perfect recipe for Ask SP. Oh, it sure does. So let's get cooking with this question from Emily. Yeah, now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> Did you fart? No, it's an expression. Let's look at the video. Hi, GDSP, my name's Emily and I've got three questions. One, what do you think of the game Nino Cooney, Rough the Right, Rich Remastered? Two, Rad, what is your favorite Pokemon? Three, how do you think defeat Ganon in Ocarina of Time 3D? Also, Rad, do these. Oh, I love these. <laughs> thanks so much. Bye. Ah, thanks, Emily. And cool Doctor Who poster. In answer to your first question about what we think of Nino Cooney, Wrath of the White Witch Remastered, well, being a fan of Studio Ghibli but never having played the original game, I was quite excited to give this remastered version a try. And I really liked it. It looks amazing. I love the artwork, the music is lovely, and the characters are adorable. Oh, pure-hearted one, will you please come and save our world? Oh, nice. I haven't gotten around to playing it myself, but maybe I should. Now, Rad, what about your favourite Pokemon? Oh, it changes all the time. I mean, you've got to give credit to the classics like Dratini and my Eggy Boys, Togepi and Execute. Crew represent, but lately I've been digging the Galarian Ponyta. It looks kind of like a unicorn, and I must say I am quite enchanted by its beautiful, colourful mane. It is an enchanting mane indeed. As for how to defeat Ganon in Ocarina of Time 3D, well, keep in mind we are about to spoil the final boss battle here. Yeah, so consider yourselves spoiler alerted. Right, so once you've defeated Ganondorf and he turns into the terrifying Ganon, you will temporarily lose your Master Sword. So you'll need to equip another weapon like Biggeron Sword or a hammer. 
Then it's all about targeting Ganon's glowy tail. You can use light arrows to stun Ganon and run around to the tail, or simply roll through his legs before he attacks. After attacking the tail for a while, Ganon will fall for the first time and the flame barrier keeping you from Zelda and the Master Sword will fall away for a moment too. Once this happens, you can retrieve and equip your Master Sword. Then head back into the fray and repeat the same process from earlier going after that tail. Persevere with this until eventually Ganon will fall again and Zelda will help you deal the final blow and best that boss. Yeah! All right, well, moving along now, and we have this question from Noble Outlaw, who is inside your computer. Your computer or mine? Victoria. Oh. Hey, GGSP. Gotta say, I love your show. I do my best to watch every episode whenever I can. My question is, in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, how do you unlock characters like the Trophy Girls, Chick, and Megamix? Thanks. BTW, do these. Whee! Ah, thank you, Noble Outlaw. To your question about how to unlock characters in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, well, the characters you mentioned were initially made available during limited time Grand Prix DLC events. Yes, but if you've missed the Grand Prix, the characters should eventually become available in the Pit Stop later on. For the cost of some Wampa Coins, of course. So you can check in with the Pit Stop regularly to see if they pop up. Now, I think we have time for one more quick video, and this one comes from Just a Random Kid. Hey, GGSP. I have a few questions. First, have you ever reviewed Brawlhalla? Second, what's the best free PC game you've ever played? And lastly, is there any LEGO movie games? Okay, I'm done here. Bye. Thanks, Just a Random Kid. In answer to your first question, well, no, we have not reviewed Brawlhalla. And it's been out for a while now, so we probably won't get around to it. But from what I can see, it's a free-to-start fighting game with all sorts of different modes and characters to unlock. But it does rely pretty heavily on in-game transactions. Hmm. Now, as for the best free PC games we've ever played, well, who could choose just one? One that I recently discovered is a simple little browser puzzle game called 10 People, 10 Colors. It is in Japanese, but you can figure out how to play it without too much trouble. Sounds cool. Now, I sometimes dabble with a game called Super Crate Box for some arcadey fun, as well as Spelunky Classic, the original version of the challenging cave platformer. There's also a free stripped-back browser version of Minecraft called Minecraft Classic. Ooh, hey, I reckon Darren might also have some good suggestions. Let's give him a call. Greetings, you've reached Darren. Hi, Darren. Uh, we were just wondering about some of the best free PC games you've ever played. Well, I would recommend exploring some classic games of old through the archive.org software library. It has an extensive catalogue of old games, including SimCity, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, and Disney's Aladdin that are playable for free in your browser. They might be oldies, but a lot of them are goodies. Oh, that reminds me, I used to really love playing Lemmings growing up. And you can play a basic version of Lemmings for free in your browser. Oh, I like Lemmings too! Controlling the fate of all those hapless little creatures. Such fun! Uh, <laughs> right, well, thanks, Darren. Bye! <laughs> Bye! As for your question about whether there are any LEGO Movie Video games, well, yes, yes, there are. There are two, in fact. The LEGO Movie Video game and the sequel, the LEGO Movie 2 video game. If you're keen to see what we thought of them, you can check them out in our online archive. And on that note, I believe we're out of time. If you have a question for us, head here to send it in. And remember that all the video questions we show receive a cool GGSP goodie pack. Now, Will, that whole cooking with gas thing, where does that even come from? I don't know, it's just a thing people say, you know? Now we're cooking with gas, now we're getting somewhere. It's just a thing. But two birds, one stone. Many a shoe make light work. Thanks for hanging out with us, GGS peeps, and keep your controllers charged because next time on the show, we see if Ocean Horn 2 on Apple Arcade is as good as The Legend of Zelda. Plus, I'm going to take you to an epic esports event the Gran Turismo World Tour Championship that recently kicked off in Sydney. Gotta go fast! Oh, Darren, that reminds me. Our Sonic the Hedgehog movie review from last week is now on the ABC Me app, so you can check that out along with other GGSP content. This week, Gem tries to survive an apocalypse in Overland. It's such a cool game. Watch the review. Until next time, though, may all your games be good ones. Gem out. Rat out. Will out. Darren out.
You know, I'm fully 100% prepared for any zombie apocalypse. My renewable energy sources can power lasers for days. 